collection opened to the public on December 1, 2019. The purpose of this exhibition was to showcase artist Naples' growing prominent collection of modern and contemporary art over the past 20 years, and also to celebrate artist Naples' commitment to increase its holdings as a young collecting institution. The museum's collection, over now over 3,000 works, encompasses Mexican, American, and European modern and contemporary art. In the next coming weeks, I will present to you video exhibition tours in four parts. The first part will focus on Mexican modern art. And in the second and third segments, I will focus on selected works in American modernism and then in European and American modern and contemporary art. In the final segment, I will take you outside of the Springboard Galleries of the Baker Museum and take you out to show some large-scale artworks displayed in Kimberly K. Query and Louis A. Simpson Cultural Campus. Mexican modern art of the first half of the 20th century is one of the strengths of our collection. Great majority of it are gifts that were made in 2002 by Mr. Harry Pollock. Selected works here are truly representative of Mexican modern art. The first work that I'd like to talk about today is this work. White Nude, painted by Rufino Tamayo in 1950, as his signature and date are included on the top right corner. Rufino Tamayo has long been one of Mexico's leading artists and famed as a colorist. He may not be as best known as Los Tres Grandes, or three great ones, such as Diego Rivera, Jose Clemente Orozco, and David Alfaro Cifreros, who believed that meaningful art must deal with and represent social injustice of the time. Instead, Rufino Tamayo had no overt political in intention in his artwork. He focused rather on abstract figuration devoid of Mexicanidad or Mexicanness by assimilating various avant-garde styles of this time period. In the 1940s, he started to paint abstract human figures, as seen here. He was also interested in uh, geometric forms and abstract colors. Departed, that departed from representational color usage. And here we see human figures in abstracted, fragmented forms represented in a shallow, compact space that is divided into squares. He also tended to represent human figures in motion, stretching out uh, their arms as seen here. And we also see a tiny window through which a full moon can be seen. Overall, this claustrophobic atmosphere of this painting evokes a sense of existential angst here. And also we can see the stylistic resemblance to formal characteristics of Pablo Picasso's artworks, which Tamayo hugely admired. And we can also see very opulent, expressive textures in which he renders the paintings, which can be only observed well when you actually stand in front of this painting. White Nude, painted in 1950, Oil on Canvas, even says Rufino Tamayo's stylistic achievement, assimilating various um, avant-garde modern art style. Next works I'd like to introduce you to represent Mexican girls 
in Brady the Hare. The first work is here. Roberto Montenegro's Citadel Girl, painted in 1958. Montenegro, although lesser known than uh, Diego Rivera or Rupino Tamayo, is a well-known Mexican modernist who was also one of the founders of the Mexican mural renaissance. He spent most of his time uh, during the Mexican Revolution living abroad in Europe. He returned to Mexico in 1921 permanently. He is well known as a portrait painter and this also shows his stylistic characteristics and how adapted he was as a portrait painter, although the identity of the sitter is not known. Roberto Montenegro oscillated between classical and avant-garde modern art, which can be seen in this painting. We can see the beautiful girl who is looking at, gazing out at us with honest, piercing gaze, is represented very naturalistically. On the other hand, we see the background is fragmented in abstract terms. She's sitting on a wooden chair on the foreground, and we also see some of the abstracted elements in the background represent a table, potentially with two fruits on the table. The next one, as one of my favorites in our collection, a drawing by Diego Rivera. I feel that there is no need to introduce who Diego Rivera is. Here we see a beautiful young girl with eyes closed, shelling a ear of corn, also surrounded by more. It is painted in black ink in a very delicate line outlining the figure. And we also start, and this drawing is made on Japanese rice paper, which enhances the actual observing experience in the museum, looking at how ink interacts with the paper. The next artwork that I'd like to introduce you to is this painting by Leonora Carrington, created in 1967 in April. Uh, it may be odd that I'm talking about a British artist, Leonora Carrington, when we are talking about Mexican modern art. But in fact, in the 1930s, 40s, and the 50s, a lot of American and European artists traveled and also emigrated to Mexico as it also was a vibrant cultural and artistic center in the first half of the 20th century. Leonora, Leonora Carrington, who was born and studied art in London and where, uh, met, uh, where she met Marx Ernst, a famous German surrealist, continued to create artwork that uh, was influenced by surrealism. She moved to Mexico permanently in 1941 and lived uh, to, until her death in 2011. And this work uh, shows her essential, quintessential uh, surrealist style that was create, inspired by her ideas of uh, alchemy, mythologies, as well as her own imagination and dreams. And here what we see is a macabre, eerie, female figure whose face is drawn like flame and she's dressed in a very strange dress that is patterned with moth uh, eyes throughout. And on, uh, in her hand she also holds little like flame. So the meaning is not closed. It's kind of open-ended and mysterious, but that's also the beauty of the surrealist artworks like uh, Leonora Carrington's. And uh, we, if we see closely, we also see that this figure that walks or floats against this dark gray uh, background um, is 
painted, you know, almost um, accidentally created patterns. I noticed that here, the, uh, the acrylic paint, uh, when it was wet, was smudged with paper or something. You can see the, the blobs of paint that is, you know, lifted. And also on the left side, we see uh, the title of the work, The Messenger, written in white uh, acrylic. Uh, and then on the right side, we see artist's signature uh, print, uh, handwritten there. Last work I'd like to talk about today is this painting by Sequeiros. It is sometimes called Visit to Prison and some other times Visit to Imprison the Farmer, painted in 1930. Sequeiros, like Rivera, believed that art and politics are inseparable. Sequeiros, who was the son of a lawyer, was politically active during the Mexican Revolution. Due to his political activism, he was imprisoned several times and spent several years in exile. In 1930, 1930 when he painted this work, he was imprisoned from May to uh, November. And in fact, he created a series of paintings depicting anecdotal tales of life in prisons. He was very much interested in the poor, the disfranchised, and um, their rights. And here, this painting, we see three women with a child that are standing next to a man wearing black suit with a high collar and black cap. According to some scholars, this man is a self-portrait of Sequeiros himself, who was imprisoned in 1930. Although his feature is quite generalized here, we, we see uh, the characteristics of Sequeiros mirror paintings from the 30s in this painting. We can see the paint are uh, created in very flat broad strokes and colors are sober. And we can see that this is the scene in prison as we can see the window with the bar on the right corner here. Sequeiros, like Rivera and Carlo, traveled greatly throughout South America, Europe, and America. And Sequeiros, uh, when he was in America in the 1930s, was also interacting with many of American modernists, such as Jackson Pollock, who was his apprentice. In the next segment, when I discuss some of the selected works from our collection focusing on American modernism. I will discuss further how Mexican modernists also influenced American modernists. I am sure many of you missed viewing artworks in the Baker Museum. I hope that these series of gallery tours will help you to navigate this difficult time. And hopefully, these tours still enrich your emotional and intellectual horizons. And I look forward to seeing you at the Baker Museum very soon.